Hi guys and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. So in front of me I have the latest version of the AMD's driver which are they now calling Crimson and not Catalyst. Since they've done a lot of changes to it I wanted to go through them and check out the performance since that is also on the release note agenda. Let's get to it and install the drivers first. As you can see the installer application is a whole lot different, looks like a Windows 8 style application, but okay it's not something to get so excited about since that's just the front skin. That checkbox for the installation is basically the same as in the Catalyst. After installation was done I've opened up the GPU-Z to check what will it say in regards of the drivers and for some reason they've showed me Catalyst 15.8 version which is a bit weird but probably a bug which will sort itself out with a new update. Opening up the new control panel is done in a usual way, right click on the desktop and now instead of the AMD Catalyst control center you have the AMD Radeon settings. As you can see the interface is totally different and actually quite cool looking. In the left bottom corner we have the updates tab where you can check if there is any new updates for the driver and since we touched that topic in regards of the Crimson, AMD promised us at least 6 official drivers per year. Right next to the updates tab we have a preference tab for the control panel where you can pull out some additional radiant settings which actually look like the old control center carrying some of the features from before. Here you can also turn off the add banners options which is a nice touch if you don't want to be harassed. Moving to the main tabs on the top, under the gaming tab you can individually per application or globally adjust the usual settings like AA or AF modes and so on. Within the tab we have another tab which is used for overclocking settings and up there you can change the basic clock and memory speed, fan speed and power limit. You can also do the individual overclocking settings per application or in general. Under the video tab you'll find options for the video reproduction profiles in regards of the color and brightness, AMD Steady and AMD Fluid Motion technology. Going to the display tab you'll find your VSR and FreeSync options as well as GPU scaling and going to the Affinity tab we currently have nothing there since we don't have multiple monitors connected but you can easily guess what you will find here under that tab. Last but not least we have this system tab in which you can check out your hardware and software information in a pretty detailed manner. Taking a quick look at the performance there is little to no difference between the new Crimson and the latest beta Catalyst drivers. Crimson pulls away just slightly but nothing extraordinary. This time we only used built-in and synthetic benchmarks as they have strict and continuous testing environment so we can precisely pinpoint the difference which is pretty important in comparisons like this one. All in all, as you can see AMD did a lot of changes on the surface and a few changes under the bonnet, some of which we cannot actually try out at the moment, like improved support for the Liquid VR or improved driver stability. That's it guys for this time, I hope you enjoyed this quick rundown of the AMD's new Crimson drivers and its features, as well as its performance overview. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and of course, if you would like to see more content like this, you can subscribe to our Tactic YouTube channel, or you can check out our other videos from before.